In this video, we're going to talk about cookies. So why do we even need cookies? Well, let's say you want to go to your favorite web page. You, can, you will send a request to the server, and the server is going to serve back a response from which we can render our page. Now, this connection is open very briefly. So if you were to send another request to the server, it's not going to know that you just sent a request. It's not going to know who you are, and it can just serve back a response. So if you want to do anything on the web page that requires the server knowing who you are, well, that's going to be a problem. You could, of course, you know, in a form, send in your username and your password, and the database could check who you are, and it would send back a response. But the problem being is once that connection is closed, well, if I send another request, it's not going to know who I am unless it's also another login attempt as well. So from a usability standpoint, there's no users out there that would accept logging in every single time they want to do something on the website. So that's where cookies come in. So you send in your login information, the, data, the server checks to, checks to see you are who you say you are, and then on the response, it's gonna send a set of instructions that say, hey, user device, go ahead and save this cookie. So the server knows the value of this cookie, your device knows the value of this cookie, so the next time you send a request, it's going to go ahead and send this cookie along with that request. When the server sees this cookie, it's going to say, hey, I know who you are. So, and you'll be able to keep sending requests and receiving responses, and the server will know who you are until this cookie expires. So let's go ahead and take a look at what a cookie is. Now I got the developer tools open, so it's just this little, uh, three dots at the top, go down to more tools, and then developer tools at the bottom. I believe you can also hit Control shift i in Windows. Um, but anyway, I am on the application tab here. As you can see, these are a key value pair. So I have my key or name, which is, I have this one cookie as first cookie, and the value I have is my first cookie value. And if I go over to network, it doesn't show anything because I haven't refreshed since I've uh, clicked on that tab. I see my local host here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to have my response header and my request header. Now the general is just going to tell me uh, some general information of both of these headers. So as we can see on our request here, we have a whole bunch of different information here. But notice under cookie, it says first cookie, that's the key, and then here's our value, my first cookie value. So these, once you've set a cookie until it expires, it's going to go ahead and be sent with the request. Now there's some other restrictions there depending you know, what you set, you know, domain, site, site only, some of these other different uh, settings. But uh, if it's allowed, it will go ahead and send the cookies that are allowed with the request. And then, of course, we have our response that's coming back from the server. Let's go ahead and take a look at our code here. Oh, and I was going to show you. Inside the HTTP package, we have a data type called cookie. And of course, you know, like I said, key value of a we have a name, we have a value, and then we have all these other different things that we can set. So I went ahead and just left some notes at the top here. Um, so we can set path, with in, which indicates which URL um, it has to exist for it to send that cookie, um, which domain uh, as well. Uh, now expires and max age will determine when this cookie will expire. So. This one is a date and time, and this one is a number of seconds that it can exist. So whichever one of these gets satisfied first, that's when it, that cookie is going to be destroyed. It's not going to wait for both of those to happen. Um, and we have secure as well, uh, making sure we got to make sure it's encrypted. So we're not going to use HTTP. Now HTTP only. Well, this one is going to make it so it can't be accessible by JavaScript, only by the server. Uh, we were, I was explaining it earlier, that was a server request where the server was sending a, uh, those instructions on the response saying, hey, uh, user device, go ahead and save this cookie. 
Now, one of the reasons this can be very useful is hackers will attempt to inject some JavaScript into your site, whether through a form or some other different means. And if it can get your server to believe that the code that they've injected is actually your code, the server's code, well, then it's going to have, you know, then it's going to be able to execute some things that you don't want to execute. It's probably that code pro isn't probably going to get escaped at that point. Um, and that JavaScript can access those cookies and make requests um, using those cookies. It could be a real security issue. Um, same site. Uh, this one, this one can say, hey, I don't want some other site to use any code to target my site and say, hey, go ahead at this path, do such and such. Um, if you don't want another site to be able to uh, interact that way, so that, that's another, that's a cross-site attack, that's another issue. So that's a helpful one to set as well. And let's go ahead and get down to the code. Okay, so we have one handler here, and it's just at, you know, at the root, so it's our index handler. And we're going to go ahead and look and see if we have a cookie already. So, so on the, our request, we're using the cookie method, and we're going to see if there is a cookie with the key first cookie. And if there is, we're going to go ahead and return that pointer to a cookie, and we're going to return our error. So, and we're going to check and see if the error is not nil. So if we don't find that cookie, we're going to have an error. And that's when we're going to go ahead and create our own cookie. So we want to make sure we have a cookie um, by, the, uh, by the, the key first cookie. So let's say if there wasn't one created yet, um, we're going to pull an error. It's not going to be nil. And then we're going to go ahead and create our cookie, which is at the address of data type http.cookie. We have our name, our value, our http only. And then we're finally going to go ahead and set the cookie. Now, notice that we're not returning an error on set cookie. This can be an inconvenience, uh, I know. But uh, if you really absolutely need to make sure, um, you could you know, check again and see you know, if that cookie indeed was set. And of course, we're going to go ahead and render our template as well. Notice set cookie as its own writer. So if I wanted to, I could comment this out. It wouldn't render our page, but it still would set our cookie. So let's go ahead and change Let's go ahead and change some values. Let's go ahead and create another cookie. And we'll create our second cookie. And we'll go back to our web page. And I want to go ahead and hit refresh just once. So for reference, we have our first cookie with the value of my first cookie. So I'm going to hit refresh once. Click on localhost. Now, on my request, notice it says, you know, we still have first cookie, my first cookie value. I don't have second cookie yet. I don't have that one. And there's a reason for that because on my request, it only sends the cookies that I already have on my machine. Being that we're setting these on the server, which is, you know, in our code here, it's going to be sent the instructions to go ahead and uh, set that cookie on our device are going to be sent back on the response. So notice here it has a set cookie, which is going to have the, the key of second cookie and the value my second cookie value. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, refresh again, and we're going to go ahead and ping, you know, uh, and request this page again. Now, if you notice on our request, being we send it again, now it says second cookie, my, my second cookie value. So, so on our first refresh, it was uh, just sending the request to the server. The server checks to see, so there, 
it, it sent all the cookies we had, which was just that first cookie. It checks to see if we have a second cookie. We did not have a second cookie under, you know, under that, that field there. So it went ahead and created a new cookie by putting that instruction on the response under the, you know, the add cookie. Notice this response doesn't have an add cookie because we didn't create a cookie the second time. And then that cookie was created on our device. So when we hit the second refresh, it all, then it did exist. So we're sending that cookie with it. Uh, one thing to note here is that notice that it's just going to keep separating these with the sem uh, semicolons um, so that so it's kind of like a slice anyway. Um, also, one thing, uh, something else to be aware of is that you only have about four kilobytes of memory uh, to store cookies for a domain. So uh, be aware of that, that you can't store obviously something huge like you know a video or a, a picture. But Anyway, and of course, if we go back to application, you can see, yes, we have a second cookie and our first cookie here under our cookies. Now, you know what, let's actually, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and delete this one. And, I believe we've covered this already, um, just as a security thing too. Even if you disallow, uh, that if you don't allow JavaScript to have access to your cookies, um, someone could still walk up to your computer, you know, if they have access to, you know, unlocking it, they can go ahead and look in your browser and see, you know, physically look at your cookies. So um, even if the JavaScript can't see it, we can still see it up here. So I went ahead and deleted this cookie. And we're gonna go ahead and go back to network. And we're gonna go ahead and hit refresh again, localhost. And again, uh, same scenario. Uh, we, didn't have, we don't have the second cookie yet. It sends all the cookies we have. I hit ref But on the way back, it did, on our response from the server, it said, hey, go ahead and set this cookie. So if I hit refresh again, as you can see, it set that cookie. We have that cookie. And of course, since we have it already, it's not attempting to create a new cookie. Uh, I'm trying to think if, uh, if I missed anything here. Uh, if you want to delete a cookie, just set the... Uh, expiration date to some time in the past uh, pretty quick pretty simple way of doing that there's no actual uh, uh, delete cookie method here you just go ahead and change the fields on that and then go ahead and set it again Let's see if I missed anything else here that should do it But anyway, um, cookies can be used for a couple different things here. You can use it for, uh, for, for maintaining a state with the server so it knows who you are. You know, in between, you know, so when it closes after each, serving each response, it still knows who you are. You can also say, save uh, you know, some data in, in these cookies. Uh, just be aware of, like I said, there's about four kilobytes, so there's not a whole lot of space there. And also, you don't want to save anything uh, critical there either. So you might say, why are we even using different values? Let's say you, know, you might use a random string of numbers for your session. So why would you use uh, session IDs? And why wouldn't you just use usernames and passwords? Well, uh, part of the issue is that, well, security. Eventually, at some point, um, a user's going to lose someone's going to get a hold of one of their cookies. Uh, it's kind of like if a contractor goes and works for a company, they're going to get an access card. You know, those have a expiration date on them. So if they forget it somewhere, you know, they're not just leaving the keys of the kingdom, you know, sitting around. That's a security issue. But let's say, you know, or if say they know one of those cards is lost, they can immediately terminate access from those swipe cards. Uh, kind of the same thing here. Uh, someone gets a hold of the cookies or they've been compromised. Well, we can uh, 
end a session. You know, we can expire a cookie pretty easily, but say if we were carrying a username and a password in there and someone gets a hold of it, well, in our database, that's a lot more work. That's just a whole lot of trouble if someone gets a hold of those because like, you can't just expire a username and a password very easily. It's just easier to create a session with, for a limited time and then you know, make a new cookie whenever you need to create a new session when the next time the uh, user logs in. So anyway, I uh, hope that was uh, helpful, hope it was useful. It's gonna help us going forward um, when we start using sessions. So uh, anyway, uh, like and subscribe if you like the content and I'll see you in the next one.